Hey there, Careblazer. Welcome back. How are you doing? At the time this video releases, it is almost Christmas. So for those of you who celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas. I hope that all of you are doing well. Today, I want to talk about something that I've actually never talked about before. And during a recent live Q&A, so I do live question and answer sessions inside of my care course for my care course members. I do them weekly. And um, I got a question that I had never really gotten before or answered. And it's basically about how do you talk to your younger children or grandchildren about a loved one who might have dementia? So if you find yourself, if you're in the position of caring for somebody who has dementia, but also either caring for a young child or grandchildren who are around that person who has dementia, what do you do? How do you talk about it? Is it okay to talk about? How do you handle this situation? So that's what this video is about. I do hope it can help you. And if you haven't already, Careblazer, I hope that you have downloaded the free Careblazer Survival Guide. I have a free Careblazer Survival Guide. It's basically an ebook. Every chapter goes over a difficult aspect of caregiving that I help you get through. And I take advantage of it. The link is below this video. Just go ahead and click the link. It'll be delivered to your inbox right away. Um, let's get started. All right, so how do you talk to your children or grandchildren about what might be going on in your loved one who has dementia? Especially if you have a loved one with dementia who might no longer have that social filter where they might say things that are rude or mean or inappropriate. They might yell, they might hit, they might throw things. This can be kind of scary and confusing for a young child. So sometimes it's a good thing to just kind of talk to your child or grandchild about what's going on, helping them understand. If you can think back when you first got into your role as a careblazer, and even still, to this day, I'm sure, there are so many different confusing symptoms about dementia, right? Like your loved one might seem completely fine one minute and then completely not fine the next minute. They might say something totally bizarre and off the wall, and then sometimes they seem like nice and totally able to have a conversation. If you can just think about how confusing that was for you in the beginning and even still some moments currently, and just try to imagine how that might be for a young child to kind of think of, especially like the careblazer who had asked me this question um, specifically was really worried about her grandchild starting to really to feel bad because a person with dementia was saying rude and mean things to her and she didn't want that grandchild to start to kind of feel bad about themselves. So my first recommendation is to talk about it, to sit down and talk to your child or grandchild, whoever it might be, and let them know about your loved one's disease. Let them know that your loved one is sick, that something is wrong with their brain, that sometimes they say and do things that are strange or bizarre, things that they don't have a control over anymore. In whatever way you think that your child or grandchild is gonna be able to understand, it is absolutely okay to just start that conversation with, with your child or grandchild and let them know that it is an illness and explaining to them that it's an illness you can't really see because it's inside the head, right? Because a lot of times children are used to seeing somebody who might not feel well and feel sick, runny nose, coughing, broken bone, a cast, crutches, right? That's an easy thing for people to understand, but it's a lot more difficult, especially for a child to understand when the illness and sickness is happening inside the, inside the body where we can't really see. Um, also, I just remember this, but I am gonna to put together a list of books and resources that you can download below this video that might be helpful to you as you talk to your child or grandchild about the disease. So like there's a bunch of like really good children's books that you can read to a grandchild or a child in terms of helping them understand what might be going on with grandma or grandpa or even dad or mom, right? So um, also when, when Along the terms of talking about this with your child or grandchild, make sure you check in periodically. It's not gonna be enough to just have this conversation once um, and then not bring it up again. You wanna check in from time to time and say, you know, how are you doing? How are you noticing um, how grandma or grandpa is doing? Have you noticed any changes? What's been difficult? Or, you know, like they're gonna need some, con not constant, but um, reminders every now and then and check-ins every now and then just to make sure they're okay, 
see if they have any more questions. You guys can even talk about some changes you guys are both noticing together. So don't be afraid to talk about it. Another thing you can consider doing is to limit interactions. So especially if you're a loved one with dementia, somebody who says some pretty vulgar things or does some things that are totally out there, socially inappropriate, you can decide to limit the interaction your child or grandchild has with that loved one with dementia. I've personally worked with families where they don't want their child or grandchild to be with the loved one with dementia without adult supervision. And I've worked with um, families who like limit like how long that child will be with that person or they don't even want the child around the person altogether. It's a personal decision, no judgment, but just know that you kind of, you can make that decision to limit it as much or as little as you want. Also, talk to your children or grandchildren about boundaries. It's okay to talk to your kids about what's okay for them to do and not do. So sometimes children feel, especially since the person with dementia is older, that they always have to do what that person says or they always have to be respectful. So it's absolutely okay to sit down and talk to the kid about, hey, you don't have to do this. Like if grandpa asks you to do blank, you don't have to. If grandma yells at you or starts throwing things, you can get up and leave the room. You don't have to stay there. You've already talked to your, you know, your child or grandchild about the disease, about the difficulty that comes with the de- disease, but it's also important just like for you, right? If your safety is at risk, if it's at imminent risk, do what you need to do to stay safe. You're not just going to stay in that dangerous situation. The same is true for your child. And a dangerous situation could be, you know, some physical aggression, like throwing things, but it also could be some verbal abuse. Like when the person with dementia starts yelling or saying mean things, like give your, empower your child or grandchild and say, Hey, you can just get up and leave at those moments. You don't have to stay there. Also, set your child or grandchild up for success. If you really are hoping for your child or grandchild to have a decent relationship or have some positive interactions with your loved one with dementia, then make sure you share with that child um, some tips, right? You know your loved one's triggers. I'm sure you know some of them. So share those triggers with the child or grandchild. You can say, hey, um, you know, grandpa really hates sports on TV. Whenever sports are on TV, he gets really upset and angry. So if you ever see that for whatever reason a sports game is coming on TV, change the channel right away, right? You can help them out. If you know that your loved one with dementia really loves cars, then you might want to encourage your child or grandchild or give your child or grandchild a magazine of cars or a car model or you know a calendar of cars that they can share with a loved one with dementia increasing the chances that the interaction they're going to have is going to be pleasant and enjoyable so share what you know helps and hurts your loved one with dementia with the child who's going to be spending time with them plan an activity for your for the child and the person with dementia to do together. If you know there's gonna be a time, an extended period of time, when the child and the person with dementia are gonna be in the same room together, in the same house together um, for a while, then you can also try to set them up for as much success as possible by giving them some ideas or setting them up with an activity, whether it be a puzzle, having them read a story together, having them look through photo albums together, putting on some oldies. Give that child um, some options and ideas to do with the person with dementia so they're not just kind of sitting there in silence not knowing what to do. Finally, don't force it. If your child or grandchild feels super uncomfortable, doesn't like it, is really hesitant, um, it's okay that maybe they don't have the greatest relationship with your loved one with dementia. I know in our mind we have this image and story that we want to have in our life. We want things to be a certain way. We we think that they shouldn't be the way that they are. Um, but whenever we resist reality, we create so much more suffering for ourselves. So it's okay that sometimes we just accept the way things are. And when you try to force a child or grandchild to become more involved with the person with dementia than they want to be, a lot of times it doesn't end up going very well at all. It ends up being quite a traumatic experience. It also increases the chances of more difficult interactions happening because the person with dementia is gonna pick up on their nonverbals and their energy and just increase the chances that it's gonna be a negative visit altogether. So Care Blazer, I did put together a list of books and resources that you might find helpful 
in terms of like books for children and teenagers and trying to explain this really com uh, complicated disease um, in a way that's easy for them to understand. If you want to check any of them out, you can download the list below this video. I do hope it will help you. Um, I am thinking of all of you guys. I hope that you're all well. I hope that those of you who celebrate Christmas have a nice Christmas planned. Um, and I will be back next week with another video, Care Blazer. All right, take care.